to build Six Wharf and welcome more and bigger ships. Napier Port needs to create a new vessel turning area and deepen parts of the harbour with a dredge so ships can safely use the wharf. My name's Paul Rose, I'm the Environmental Manager for Six Wharf Development. The Resort Consent is a capital dredging project that, which is different to maintenance. Maintenance dredging is where you put the depths back to how they were, whereas capital is virgin material. We have 1.3 million cubes of dredge spool to put out in stage one, and then another 2.5 million in stages two to five. We have a consented offshore disposal ground, which is 5K to the east of where we are now. All the capital dredging is going offshore because uh, that's the best environmental outcome for this project. Yeah, my name is Jaco and uh, I'm an operator on a GPK. Yeah, that's all uh, controlled by GPSs and sensors and fits into this computer system. And uh, we can see our height and, and where we are and it's all sort of worked out on it. And it gives us the accuracy in the whole operation. After we've been through with the dredging, they multi-beam the area so they can actually see the sea floor in 3D. Um, and they can tell how much they've taken out of one area down to how much they need to take in other areas. My name's Peter Frizzell and uh, I'm the Napier Port Hydrographer. I started with the port 52 years ago, October 1969 I first came here. And the place is vastly different now from what it was in those days. When I started here, the, uh, the fairway channel came around the end of the concrete breakwater and where all that reclamation is, that used to be the channel. All the dredging was done with a bucket dredge, the old Wakariri. It was an old steam dredge and, and it had several cubic metre buckets in a chain and the buckets uh, went round and discharged into the, uh, into the hopper. But uh, there was high maintenance on that. It was, it was quite an old bit of equipment and more than 40 years ago they did did away with that. Well, she was dredging constantly. It wasn't like uh, we have now, where we have a, a dredging campaign and the dredge might be here for three weeks and then she'll come back in another two or three years. This was, this was constant dredging. It was uh, fairly inefficient dredging, even though the dredge was working all the time. So the channel wasn't as wide, certainly not as wide as it is now. Here we've got the, right down the bottom of uh, this line where you see the purple, that's very hard rock. So we try with the bucket and if we can't get it out anymore, we're gonna swap over the bucket to that uh, ripper, we call them. And we go down there then and just scratch it through and get every single bit loose. And then we come back again with the bucket and pick it up and that way we achieve the design and achieve our goal to where we need to be. There's just no comparison. The technology there is just so much different. When I started here, we used to do lead line soundings in the Ahariri Inner Harbour. A lead line is a marked rope with a weight on the bottom of it, and you drop it down and you measure the depth of the seabed to the, uh, to the water level. And now we, uh, we've got GPS technology, RTK technology, which gives very precise positioning vertically and horizontally, and it just makes it so much easier. Pania Reef is the most significant and only structure here in Hawke Bay. Uh, it's very significant to local iwi and also local fishermen. So the port has worked in some good partnerships with uh, the local iwi. Uh, we also have a fishing liaison group. We want to protect Pania, so for us to protect Pania, we use water quality buoys either side that will pick up the dredge plume. Just next to me now is a turbidity buoy. This is what we use to monitor the water quality out at Pania. It's solar run, has one turbidity sensor at the bottom that looks for how clear the water is and all the information gets sent in real time. So every 15 minutes, this takes a reading. So anyone in the public, including us port staff, can see what the clarity at Pania is via these machines here. By having these monitors, we've been able to prove that there's wider uh, turbidity created by the swells and the impact of the dredging is, is minimal. So as part of the ongoing consent 
commitments that we made to locals. Um, before we pulled the wall apart, we removed all the crayfish and kinna. All the crayfish got released to Pania. Um, also in the wall was penguins, so we've moved over 180 penguins safely into our on-port sanctuary, including microchipping 154 individual penguins so far. We also have made a couple of reefs out of the limestone wall, um, which is pretty cool to give back to Hawke's Bay as a new fishery habitat. Future development of the port, probably the greatest demand will be to be able to service deeper draft ships. At the moment we're dredging down to 12 and a half metres, but eventually we hope to be able to get to 14 and a half metres. But that will be as the demand to service deeper draft ships arises.